These are my words for starting at page 60. Thursday, October 20. Miss Lewis took me to the dentist this afternoon. We took the bus there and back. She showed me the address of the dentist's office, and that got me thinking, so I asked her how a city address worked. I only need to put general delivery and the town when I write a letter to mother and grandma. That's when she told me that all the streets have different names and all the houses and buildings have numbers on them. So when we got to town, she showed me the street sign and then she made me find the building number. That was fun. The dentist was nice and the filling wasn't too bad. My lip was frozen on one side all afternoon, but I was all right by supper time. Miss Lewis was really nice to be with. Friday, October 21. Sandra, the Cree girl, was back at her place at the dining room table this evening. She still has a black eye. I don't know where she was for the last couple of days. They don't talk, to, uh, they don't let us talk about anything, and no one tells us anything. So we don't know anything about anything. Saturday, October 22nd. I bought another sponge toffee from the man at the park this afternoon. This time I was by myself, so I got to eat it all by myself. There was hardly anyone around at the park today. It was cold and windy. That, ma that candy man said something weird to me. He never says anything, but today he said if I come back at five o'clock, he could give me a free chocolate bar. I didn't like the way he was looking at me, from my feet to my head. I did not like that look. I don't think I will be going there again. I discovered a small corner store down the street before the residential school. I can just run in there on the way home. There is no one in the dorm when I got back. I'm going to write a letter to Jenny, I think. I will try to mail it whenever I find out where to send it. I'll read my letters to Grandma from Grandma and Mother first, feeling very homesick. Later on the same day, I'm writing under the front window right now. I went to reach for my letters from mother and grandma, but they weren't there. Someone has taken my letters. I had them on, on the top shelf of my locker under some clothes. I've been crying since. Now I won't even see their handwriting anymore. It's a good thing I copied the letters down here, but it's still not the same. Sunday, October 23. We all trooped up to the chapel this morning. It was very foggy. The boys were running around in the field until the supervisor bellowed really loud. and They all had to line up before moving toward the chapel. The girls were giggling at them. It's evening now, and I didn't like supper too much. It was ro roast pork slices or something, and I did not like the taste. I ate all the food on my plate, though. All the girls are watching Walt Disney but it's about an airplane and I got bored. I just finished my peanut butter sandwich and apple juice. I'm pretending to do my homework. I asked two girls in the bathroom if they lost their letters too, but they just looked at me and said nothing. Monday, October 24. I woke up with a nightmare. I was dreaming that mother and grandmother were walking away from me on the railroad track and I was yelling for them to wait for me and I ran and ran as fast as I could, and I could not get any closer, and they wouldn't even turn around to wait for me. I got up and went to the window. It was early morning and still dark. I saw a bus go by on the main street. I was just silently crying when I saw someone coming up the long, wide driveway between the tall, sad-looking trees. I realized that it was the cook. I see her in the kitchen sometimes when I'm sweeping the floor after breakfast. She's a tall, big, with a round face, and her blonde hair is always in some elastic netting over her head. She talks with a strange accent, but she just goes about her business. Tuesday, October 25th. At lunchtime, Miss Tanner called me and told me not to go back, go back to school after I swept the dining room floor. She's taking me to an eye doctor. She drove the residential school car to the place. After she parked the car, she pointed to the street, and I asked if I could find the building number. I was almost sure there was a little smile that quickly disappeared when she nodded. We walked down the street with the tall buildings, and, I fi and finally I spotted the number. 
We went up the steps and found the doctor's name on one of the doors. After waiting a while, I was called into the room. The doctor asked me to cover my left eye and then my right while I while trying to read the letters on the wall in the, across the room. Then a machine was placed over my face and the doctor started clicking different lenses over my eyes. After reading some rows of large letters into tiny ones, I was surprised when the words on the board across the room suddenly came sharply into focus. When I was done, Mrs. Tanner said, I could only have basic frames. They are black with a slight curve at the end. That was fine with me. When we got back, she told me to do my homework in the dorm or take a nap if I wanted. It was too late to go back to school. She was really nice to me today. October 26, Wednesday. We were lining up this morning before we entered the dining room for breakfast. Miss Tanner told us that Laura had to go home. Her little brother had an accident and had died. That was all she said. We were all shocked. We murmured our breakfast prayer and entered the dining room. Then we said the thanks prayer afterward. No one told us what happened to the little guy. Thursday, October 27th. There is a group of four Cree girls who are always together. They don't bother anyone, and I never paid much attention to them before. The leader is a girl with a pretty face. They are all from the same reserve up north. The other three girls hover around her all the time, and then and they even tie on a, her apron for her. They take off her shoes and put them on for her. She just lifts one foot and then the other. I hear that her father is a very important person on their reserve. Everyone calls her princess when she can't hear them. It's really funny to watch. Sometimes one of the other girls will say, look, look, here they come. And they watch to see what princess will do. The girls even try to do her chores for her, but they are not allowed. Miss Tanner caught them once and made princess clean the whole washroom over again by herself. Sunday, October 30. After lunch, one of the girls at the table was tilting her chair back and rocking it back and forth, and she was making faces at another girl across the table, and I knew her chair was going to go over. Just then, she stuck out her tongue at the girl across the table and kicked her chair back, and her chair went crashing down backwards. The supervisor was on her in an instant, hauled her up and out of the dining room, and straight to the office, we thought. I don't remember seeing her at supper. Monday, October 31. It's Halloween today. I have no idea what that means. I'm not ashamed to ask what Halloween is. I would, or sorry, I am ashamed to ask what Halloween is. I would look really stupid. We made some Halloween stuff at school. Orange paper pumpkins, leaves and stuff. I don't know why. I just have no idea what the pumpkins have to do with it. Maybe pumpkin is like Santa Claus. We got some toffee candies wrapped in orange paper as a treat after supper. We were just getting ready for bed when a girl screamed. We all turned to see a man's face with a horrible mask on through the window on the fire escape door. There is a zigzag stairway on each floor outside the building. That's where he came up from. Next morning, we heard that the boy's two supervisors chased the masked man off the property but did not catch him. He had disappeared into the bushes behind the building. Thursday, November 3rd. I had a long cry this afternoon in the shower area. That was the only place that was empty. There are always people around, and it is never quiet anywhere. Yet I feel so very alone. I haven't seen Emma for a long time. I just want to go home. Monday, November 7th. I got a letter from Grandma. I held it to my chest a long time before I pulled the page out of the envelope. I will forever copy every letter I get from now on. I still don't know if it was the supervisor or one of the girls who took my letters. I noticed that some of the girls got jealous if they did not get letters, and maybe it was one of them that took the letters for spite. October 31, 1966. Dear Peanut, It was good to hear from you. I'm glad you have good things to eat. Don't get to like television too much because you will miss it when you get home. Yes, the storms have been really bad in the past uh, last couple of weeks. I almost got caught in a snowstorm yesterday. 
It was hard to see in the thick snow. I was coming back from checking my rabbit snares off the railway track. The snow covered my tracks and it was hard trying to find where I, find out where I was. I had a good laugh at myself. I should have known better than to go out when I could see the clouds coming. I did find the railroad tracks though and I was way off way off down down the tracks about half a mile away from my path from where my path was. That was my adventure for the day. I saw Blackie again when I walked by his house this morning. He has no idea what he's getting into in a story taking place far away. I hope you bring the story home with you at Christmas. I would very much like to read it. Now Jenny's address is Miss Jenny Klein's 17 Herrings Road, Warrington, Ontario. She will be very happy to hear from you. I understand that she lives with her aunt. Take care now and be happy. Love always, Grandma. I was so happy that I wrote to Jenny right away. Miss Tanner gave the letter back to me after school. Family only, she said. Well, if I can get an envelope, I could buy a stamp and put on it. I'll have to figure it out, figure that out. Maybe I can get Miss Lewis to buy, buy me some. Maybe they have them in the corner store. I could go look sometime and see how much they cost. Yeah, that's what I'll do then. I can mail my own letters. But if Jenny answers back, they'll figure out they'll figure that out. And maybe I'll get into trouble. I don't think I'd better do that. They check all our stuff once in a while too. Miss Tanner goes through all our night tables and lockers without saying when she is going to. So I'd have to I'd have nowhere to hide the envelopes anyway. I keep my diary with me at all times, or between the pages of my Blackie story. At mealtimes, Miss Tanner or Miss Lewis is always present at the dining room, so no fear there. Tuesday, November 8. After school, we were getting ready for supper when I heard my name through the intercom, saying that there was a phone call. For me. I flew down the stairs and ran into the supervisor's lounge, and just as I got there, the boy supervisor handed me one phone while he listened on another. Just as I picked up, I heard Grandma say, Is that you? Can you hear me? In our language. Before I could answer, the supervisor snatched the phone back and slammed it down. I could have burst into tears, but I just looked at the man in the eyes and I walked back out up the stairs. I wanted to cry so badly that I was halfway up the stairs when the supper bell rang. So I just ran downstairs ahead of the others. We lined up again to say our prayer before going in. Wednesday, November 9. I think I'm going to remember the smell of food cooking every time we go up and down the stairs. That was the first thing you smell when you enter the side door. Grandma's voice keeps repeating over and over again in my ear. Is that you? Can you hear me? I don't think she'll try to call again. It was so good just to hear her voice. I had a long cry again last night. The thought, I, I thought about her walking to the store and asking the storekeeper to put in the call for her, and then having to go home disappointed at not being allowed to talk to me. I really wish they hadn't taken my blue diary that Grandma had given me. She had written a note on the inside cover, and she wrote in it some of her sayings. One was, never be louder than the little birds when we were outside. Another was, let the sun see your clean and happy face first thing when it comes over the horizon. That was so that I didn't sleep in. I'd have my face washed and hair combed to my chair chores done before the sun came up each morning. There were many more of her sayings that I had written in there. I would really like to have had that diary right now. Thursday, November 10. Everybody is coughing, sniffling, sneezing. All night, there were about three girls coughing all the time. No one got much sleep. I feel okay right now, but I'll probably get a cold too. I don't feel like going to school. My head hurts. I managed to get through the day, but my throat started hurting after school. There were some empty beds. I asked the, the girl next to me where the girls were, and she said, in the infirmary. She laughed when I asked what on earth that was. I asked another girl what the infirmary was, and she looked at me like I was stupid and said, the sick room. Okay, so now I know. 
That was probably the place Miss Lewis took me to practice changing the sheets without moving me, except she never told me what the place was called. Friday, November 11. Remembrance Day today. We had to stand up at 11 o'clock at school and stand very quiet for a whole minute. I don't quite understand what that was about. I think it has to do with the war a long time ago. My throat still hurts and my voice sounds funny. Grandma would have picked up some cedar branches and made tea from the green leaves for me to drink. And then she would have mashed the rest into a frying pan with a bit of water and flattened it into a cheesecloth and laid it out over my throat. A poultice, I think that's what they call it in English. I better not mention that I caught a cold the next time I write you. They might not mail my letter. Saturday, November 12th. I went into the sewing room to where a girl was sitting in front of the sewing machine. It was a different girl from the one who sewed the first booklet for me. I asked if she would sew down the middle of my new pages for me, but she just looked at me and told me to go away, that I was not supposed to be in there. More girls were coming in, so I just ran out. I have to figure out another way to keep my pages together from my, for my diary. I finished my work and it passed inspection, so I have some time this afternoon to write my black history. Monday, November 14. It's my birthday today. I'm 13 years old. I can't talk. I have lost my voice, but otherwise I feel okay. The supervisor gave me a letter from Grandma after school. It had a $5 bill inside for my birthday. I'm going to take it and make it last as long as I can. Again, I'm copying this letter into my diary. November 7th. My dear Peanut, I'm thinking of you today. I want to be sure you will get this before your birthday, so I thought I would send it to you ahead of time. It has been so lonely here without you. I do miss you so. Your mother, father, brother, and little sister are doing fine. I will try to call you. We have had a lot of snow this fall. Everything here is the same. Nothing new to report except that the teacher from last year did not come back. There is now a new woman teacher who everybody is grumbling about. Had a young guy bring me some wood for, t for taking care of his sick mother. They are doing fine now. The trains, have changed, the trains have changed schedule again, so I cannot go to the small town to get some stuff and come back again. Now I have to go the other direction where I don't have to stay overnight, but it gets back quite late at night. Anyway, all that is beside the point. I am well and am looking forward to seeing you as soon as they let you come home. I have managed to save $5 to send to you for your birthday. With love, Grandma. I wonder what she'd say if she knew that they took my diary away. I wonder what she would say... I wonder what she would have given me for my birthday if I was with her. Maybe we should, she would have made something. My teardrops just blotched the writing, and I brushed them away before I turned the letter into my Hebrew pen. Tuesday, November 15. I feel okay today. My voice is all right, and my throat is not sore anymore. At lunch, Mrs. Tanner told me she would pick, up, pick me up half an hour early from school to pick up my glasses. I'm so excited. In the afternoon, the gym teacher took us outside. There was a long sheet of ice on the ground. We had a large jam can filled with frozen water with handles sticking up on top. They were throwing the cans to make them slide down the ice. I don't know what that was about. Then Miss Tanner arrived and we went back to the doctor's office. And after sitting and waiting in the waiting room for a while, he called me into the small room put the glasses on my nose. And the writing across the room was very clear. He fixed the ear curves, and then I was set to go. I'm so amazed at the way things are so clear. I never knew that there was anything wrong with my eyes. I was shy when I came up the dorm, but no one paid attention to me except the girl beside my bed. She crossed her eyes at me and stuck out her tongue at me. I laughed. After a while, I forgot about my glasses on my face. That's the end of our reading for today.